Hey everybody, welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Rod Placone. Howdy, howdy. Rod's going on tour. Where are you? Yeah, November 23rd, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm going to Florida in January, New Orleans in March. Tickets available at ronplacone.com. Wow, March. That's quite a long way away. <laughs> um, so it turns out the blue wave was a little bigger than was originally thought, right? So as long as I've lived in California, which is since 1995... Uh, Orange County has always been Republican, red Republican. They have crazy Dana Rohrbacher out there. They have the biggest jagoffs representing them. Uh, and um, Hillary Clinton won some of those congressional districts, and so that was like, hey, we could win it. So here, this is quite stark. What happened? So this was Orange County. This is Orange County. So Orange County is just south of Los Angeles. And again, like I said, it's always been red. There was these little two blue things right there, right there. Uh, That was California 47, 46 and 47. And then the rest of it was red. Well, that was in 2016. Look at this. Turn the whole goddamn thing. I used to go tell jokes down here. And uh, whenever we would go tell jokes, then you're going to Orange County like, oh, it's a Republican. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be. That's what people would always write when we go down to the the improv in Irvine or Brea or wherever wherever you'd go in Orange County. They're like, oh, it's going to be Republican. In fact, when I wanted to do, uh, I pitched to the improvs a pop in politics, which was a live version of the Jimmy Dore show, basically before there was a Jimmy Dore show. So, uh my manager uh, pitched it to the improvs. Hey, would Jimmy would like to take his show and play your improvs all around the country. They said, sure. And let's, uh, let's take a look at his show. And they had me go on to the Irvine improv to do my politics show to see if it would play there, because if it would play there, it would probably play anywhere. It worked, went over great. And I started playing uh, for a year. We did pop and politics all around the country. Mm-hmm. So that was great. And then, um, I, t- I stopped doing that so I could get ready to do my hour special. Um, and then we just, and then things, things got crazy after that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, there it is. That's a big deal. That's big. I, it, yeah. And, um, and here they are, by the way. So one of the guys, his name is Mike Levin. Mike Levin is from right down here. And so here's all the people. So this is uh, Cisneros, this guy named Rauda. Uh, Korea, is that how you say it? Korea? Um, who's that guy? That guy is, um, who is that guy? Would that be? This white guy? Would that be Lowenthal? Would that be? No, no, Lowenthal's no, here. That, that's Lowenthal. Katie Porter's okay. here. So we don't know who that guy is. That's Katie Porter. Katie Porter, very, but she, they say she's the Elizabeth Warren protege. Katie Porter, and I remember, I remember I wanted to interview Katie Porter at the California Democratic Convention, and she said no. <laughs> she was like, I have a banker to yell at. She's, I don't. She's like, no, we're busy. I'm like, okay. And then I saw her like 10 minutes later doing now. I'm like, what the, that hurts my feelings. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a human being. I have feelings. But anyway, uh, I was told, Adam Green, the guy from the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, that's a funny name. Um. He told me, he says, you should go interview Katie Porter. I was like, oh, really? So I went out. I'm like, hey, Katie, we'd like to interview. No. <laughs> Her handler said that. Yeah, Katie didn't say that. She didn't talk to us. Um, but anyway, I mean, I'm like, I go to a progressive show. Adam Green told me you're a progressive. I'd like to interview. <laughs> anyway, but she won, and that's a big deal. She beat uh, Mimi Walters, and uh, so that's great. And uh, this is, and by the way, so she's very progressive, Right, she's for uh, Medicare for all. Yes, and, she is. Yes. Uh, so Lowenthal also. So he's also uh, taken over. Lowenthal is from the forty seventh. So he would be up yeah. there. So uh, he's for Medicare for all. So they're all now the the people who aren't as progressive are up here. So. I'll show you this picture. So the guy on the left uh, and this guy here. So they're not as progressive, but they're... Uh, and ironically, they're kind of positioned to the left. Ha, huh, ironically. 
Well, so Levin's, this, Levin's fairly pure, and he's yes. he's in the middle. He he disrupts that part, but yeah. Yeah, so this guy's pretty uh, liberal, this yeah, Levin guy. Yeah, he's pretty guy. progressive. Now, the reason why I bring a, a lot of this, first of all, it's an interesting story. Look at that. Um, This guy won the lottery. <laughs> he was in, right? I don't know. We, he's living in Puerto Rico. He wins like $250 million in the lottery, and then he moves to like your Belinda. <laughs> he moves to Orange County, and now he's a congressperson. And he's a Democrat. That is so not what I would do if I won the lottery. I mean, that's like the last thing I think. I, I, you want to go to Orange County and be a politician? No. No. That's, is that a joke? That's totally not what I'm doing I would at go to, all. I'll go to Hawaii and be yeah. a politician. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, there's a, so now here's the thing. Mike Levin, there he is. He's from the California 49th. Uh, he tweeted out this letter of support for Nancy Pelosi. And then Katie Hill, who's not from Orange County, uh, she's from northwest of uh, Los Angeles, right? So it's usually a very heavy Republican, but she's a Democrat, but she's very, you know... She's more moderate compared she, let's to Let's say Mike. centrist yeah. compared. Let's say centrist, right? And um, Katie Hill, but she's a Democrat. There's Big Tent... That Democratic Party, <laughs> big tent, goes from Ro Khanna to Joe Manchin. That's a pretty big tent. It's, it's true. Whew. <laughs> it's... Right? So she falls in the middle somewhere, Katie Hill. And here's here's what they tweeted out. She says, Mike Levin of California Night, they both tweeted out this letter of support for Nancy Pelosi. And she says, hey, Mike Levin and, and I agree that our ability to deliver on the promises we made to our constituents depends on leadership that is bold, pragmatic, and capable of swift results. This is why we support Nancy Pelosi. Now, that sounds like a punchline after you say that. Bold? Nancy Pelosi's anything but bold. She, she's not bold at all. You remember, you remember impeachments off the table for war criminals? You mm -hmm. remember that? I do. How about she's not for Medicare for all? That's not bold. She's behind the rest of the country on that. Nine out of ten Democrats are for Medicare for all. The majority of Republicans are for Medicare for all. We can't even get the Democratic leader to be bold enough to say I'm for something the entire goddamn country's for, including Republicans? That's just a crazy, bold, pragmatic, 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 which you know what? We need to take that back because there's nothing pragmatic about thumbing your nose at public opinion when you're an elected official. Nothing. There's nothing pragmatic, there's nothing about, pragmatic, about, pragmatic that. about that. Right. You're exactly right, Ron. So it's time we take that back. And capable of swift results. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> And so I just picked out, it's a long letter, and I picked out this part, and it's too small for you to read, but so I'll read it to you. This is the letter that they both tweeted out. We, like so many of you, ran on a message of change. We ran with the intention of becoming part of a new generation of leadership that can not only, new generation of leadership. Well, that's not Nancy Pelosi. That's the opposite. She's been the leader for almost two decades. But change politics as usual by changing the culture of Was changing the culture of Washington. Nancy Pelosi by by following the person that says people don't want to change. <laughs> right? <laughs> we endorse the person that says there's no need for change. We are so excited to work with a freshman class that will make up more than a quarter of the Democratic caucus and with a record number of women. How so then we second paragraph House Democrats cannot afford to let internal party discord and infighting continue to dominate the public conversation as we officially move into the majority. So what do you do with your disagreements? What do you do with your progressive vision that you want to have the corporate Democrats change? You just shut up. I mean, I thought the time to talk about our disagreements was not now. during the election season. Right. And apparently it's not now either. When is it? When, <laughs> when so, do we form consensus on anything? So there's a civil war inside the Democratic Party. And um, 
they're saying don't talk about it. They're saying don't even have that war. Just shut up and get behind Nancy Pelosi. It sounds like it. House Democrats cannot afford to let internal party discord. We have T-shirts now that say fomenting discord, by the way. (laughs) Down below. Down down below. Fomenting discord. (laughs) We cannot let uh, afford to let internal party discord and infighting and infighting continue to dominate the public conversation. So I guess then Nancy Pelosi is going to jump on board then with Medicare for all, free college, ending the wars, and a livable wage. Is that going to happen? Oh, no, we have to shut up. We have to shut. It's us shutting up again, right? That's pra- that's called pragmatism. So uh, we cannot dominate the public conversation as we officially move into the majority. We need to change the narrative back to the issues we won on. Health care. As of the recording of this, Nancy Pelosi is still on board with Pago. Nancy She's Pelosi- made that clear as of recent. So what Pago means is you can't. Do Medicare for all. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what that means. You officially can't do Medicare for all. But you can you can vote for two hundred billion dollars more for the military. That's what paygo means. Uh, we need to change the narrative back to the issues we want on health care. Nancy Pelosi, not for Medicare for all, like the majority of the country. It's not even something you have to convince people of. They're already convinced. She, uh, increasing wages by investing in infrastructure. So not increasing wages by having a minimum wage bill, mm-hmm. but increasing wages by spending money on infrastructure. Infrastructure also good. Those two things don't need to be tied together. You can have a higher minimum wage. You can have a livable wage. Yeah, you can have living wages, and of course those living wages are part of the infrastructure jobs too. Yes, so this is gar- garbage. Already increasing wages. So those two things are fucking half measures. Right? Talking about health care, not talking about Medicare for all. Talking about the Affordable Care Act, which leaves out 30 million people. Do you understand why blue collar and poor people aren't excited about the ACA because they can't even afford their goddamn deductible so they don't even have access to health care anymore anyway? I mean, this is garbage. Health care and increasing wages by investing in infrastructure and cleaning out the culture of corruption. You mean you mean the culture of corruption? You mean how the Democrats decided to reverse their own rule and start taking fossil fuel money again? You mean that kind of corruption? Or just the Trump kind of corruption? You mean the kind of corruption that leads every Democrat to vote for the fucking bloated Pentagon bill? $715 billion? What kind of corrupt? They just, so, so it's very, this is very exciting when you see this. It's very exciting. And I'm all for it. And now we got to hold their goddamn feet to the fire. This is why it's so hard to be a progressive inside a, a, or a revolutionary inside a counter-revolutionary party, which is what the Democratic Party is. And I'm rooting for people to, for a progressive takeover of the Democratic Party. I'm rooting for it. The only way it's going to happen is we stay on these people. This is, that's a bullshit thing, that letter. That's you're you're basically gaslighting people. That letter basically is gaslighting people. And Nancy Pelosi's the person to bring change. She already said Pago. Well, and that's the thing too. I mean, in in the these, you know, the folks in Orange County aren't the only ones. There there's like more people coming around, to, "Oh yeah, we're going to get behind Pelosi cuz she promised the progressives that we would have more power." And and really she just said, "Yeah, I'll consider what you yeah. guys have to say." And it's like, "Okay, that's not how negotiation works. Like, that's like, have you ever been negotiating with a person where you're going to trade on something and be like, hey, I'll install your washer if you maintain my garden? And they go, I'll think about it. You're like, sounds great. <laughs> sounds deal. great. Deal. That's not, it, it doesn't work that way. So here's the thing that they point to, and I'll show health care, increasing wages by investing in infrastructure and cleaning out the culture of corruption. That's right there, that last line. 
healthcare. So what we need and what the Moving for a People's Party put out in their press release, what we need is not these kind of bullshit platitudes, but we need solutions that are proportionate to people's problems. That's what we need, which means a living goddamn wage. Not hope that wages go up by osmosis because we're spending money on infrastructure, but actually mandate it. Healthcare. That's enough. Again, we not healthcare. Affordable Care Act is not proportional to the problems we have. Even people with healthcare go bankrupt when they get sick. Everybody in this country is going broke because of health care. People's premiums have doubled in the last 10 years with the Affordable Care Act. Which isn't something that's meant to be strengthened, by the way. Right? Like, that's another sentiment that just needs to go away. We're going to strengthen it. No, the Affordable Care Act was in place to give the insurance companies a seat at the table. They are the parasites in our system. So saying you're going to strengthen the Affordable Care Act, it's like hiring a pest control company where it's like, we're going to leave some of the pests there, though. Yeah. It, it, no, strengthening the ACA, that means Medicare for all. That means single payer. That's right. So, uh, well, here's what Kamala Harris accomplished. She goes, how do you plan to deliver on policies your constituents need while simultaneously backing a leader who supports PAYGO and a supermajority require oh, and a supermajority requirement for raising taxes, which would make Medicare for all impossible. So this is the gaslighting the Democratic Party's doing again. And I'm sure people will get mad at me for pointing out the frickin' obvious. And the obvious is getting behind Nancy Pelosi with this kind of bullshit uh, makes this a lot less exciting. Nancy Pelosi is the and the way they govern and the Affordable Care Act and the way the Democrats have governed for the last is what gave us Trump. Nancy Pelosi's style of politics is what gave us Trump. People still can't make that connection. People still focusing out. Trump is a symptom of a of a uh, of two political parties turning their back on working people and the problems of the country. These this this letter mentions the problems. They kind of casually address them. This isn't bold. This is not bold. It's the opposite of bold. You you say bold and then you put mealy mouth freaking language in your letter? That's what that is. That's mealy mouth language. Jesus H. F. and Christ. Healthcare, increasing wages by investing in infrastructure. How about we just have a living wage? How about we just have Medicare for all? And no more talking. No more worrying about deductibles and copays and this, that, and insure and pre existings and blah. just Medicare for all. You're sick, you go to the doctor, it's taken care of. We have one big insurance pool. Everybody's in it. Everyone else in the world does it. Everyone else in the world does it. So. Forgive me. Again, it's great that the Democrats took over Congress. It's important to have a check on Trump. Super important. This is not a winning strategy. Half measures, platitudes, corporate friendly policies. That is not a winning strategy. Which is what Nina Turner says. Do the math. Moderate Democrats will not win in 2020. Talk that talk. Moderates, are you listening? Do the math. Moderate Democrats will not win in 2020. So, again, I uh, I don't want to... Uh, I want to make sure I don't dampen anybody's enthusiasm for working for progressive goals. I just want to give everybody... I just want to make sure we have both eyes open... And we know what we're getting into and what's actually happening. So I love this. I love that this happened. 
Now we ha- now it- now we have to make him progressive. Our next live Jimmy Dore show is February 1st in Burbank, California. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a list of all our live shows. And please become a premium member if you can. Become a patron. It's the way we support this show because they're coming at us. And we give you bonus. We give you hours of bonus material every week. Check it out. Become a patron. And if you can, make sure you're still subscribed. They unsubscribe people every day. I know it sounds crazy. It only takes a second. Please make sure and click that bell when you subscribe so they'll send you a notice when we drop a video. Thanks for your support. Mm